The weights for newborn babies is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 6.4 pounds and a standard deviation of 2 pounds. Consider a group of 800 newborn babies. How many would you expect to weigh between 5 and 8 pounds? So we're going to start with question 1. So how many babies would we expect to weigh between 5 and 8 pounds? Now this problem isn't difficult, it's just long. But let's go step by step through it, shall we? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is draw a normal distribution curve just to get an idea of what's going on and to visualize our data. So we've got this normal distribution curve and I know that the middle or the mean for this curve is at 6.4 pounds. So I'm going to write 6.4 pounds right here. So this is going to be my measurement of pounds. I have a standard deviation of 2 pounds, right? So my mean is 6.4, my standard deviation is 2, which means if I add 2 pounds to 6.4, that gives me my first standard deviation away, which is 8.4 pounds. And then if I add another 2 pounds, it would be 10.4 pounds, etc., etc., etc. On the other side, if I subtract 2 pounds, that gives me 4.4 pounds. And if I subtract another 2 pounds, that gives me 2.4 pounds. So this kind of just gives me a reference point when I'm going to sketch my problem. So for question one, it says, how many would you expect to weigh between 5 and 8 pounds? Well, now I can visually see 5 pounds is roughly in between 4.4 and 6.4. So 5 pounds is roughly right here. And 8 pounds, well, that's roughly over here somewhere. And so what we're asked is to find the number of babies that fall between 5 pounds and 8 pounds. So what's our plan of attack? Our plan of attack is to, first of all, calculate the probability that we fall in this band. So our first goal is to figure out what's the probability that we fall in this band. Once we get that probability, then we can multiply it times the 800 newborn babies. And that's going to give us our total number between 5 pounds and 8 pounds. All right, so to get that probability, what do we need? We need our z-score and our z-table because the probability corresponds to the area under the curve. So we're going to need that z-table, those z-scores. I don't have z-scores, do I? Remember, z-scores measure the difference away from the mean, the number of standard deviations away from the mean. And so Z scores, well, at the mean, Z would be 0. At 8.4, Z would be 1. At 4.4, Z would be negative 1, right? So my Z scores are the things I'm going to use on my chart, but I don't have those Z scores. I need to get the Z scores so I can use the chart. And how do we do that? Well, we have a formula. Our formula for calculating z-scores is that the z-score is equal to your given data number, x, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So I want to calculate two z-scores. The first z-score is going to be the z-score that corresponds to 5 pounds, and the second z-score is going to be the z-score that corresponds to 8 pounds. I'm going to use my formula, z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation, and here we go. So z, the first z score, is equal to, and let's use 5 as our x value, minus the mean, which is 6.4, divided by the standard deviation, which is 2. If we take 5 minus 6.4, we should get negative 1.4, right? 5 minus 6.4 is negative 1.4. And if we divide negative 1.4 by 2, that tells me that the z-score is negative 0 0.7. So the z-score that corresponds to 5 pounds 
is actually z is negative 0 0.7. And that makes sense with my chart, right? It falls in between negative 1 and 0. So good, I got my first z-score. Now let's get our second z-score. Our second z-score is occurring when I have 8 pounds. And so again, I'm going to use this formula and I'm going to plug in, except this time we're going to substitute 8 in place of x. So I have 8 minus 6.4 divided by 2. And taking 8 minus 6.4, I get 1.8. And 1.8 divided by 2 is actually 0 0.9. So on the right side, the z-score that corresponds to 8 pounds is the z-value 0 0.9. And that makes sense, again, because this is almost at 1 for standard deviation away. Now we're ready to use our Z chart, our Z table scores. So we have that area chart and we have two Z values. Now, I just want to do one more thing. When we look on that chart, remember, the chart gives us the area in between the mean and our Z score. So on the right, we're going to look for 0 0.9 and using the chart, it will tell us the area for that red band. And then we're also going to take a look and we're going to choose the other side and we're going to use our Z table to calculate that band. And that time we're going to use the value 0 point, negative 0 0.7, okay? So for the right side, we'll use 0 0.9 and for the left side, we're going to use negative 0 0.7. All right, so here we go. I have a table on the next page, so let me scroll over to the next page, and I'm going to first look up 0 0.9, okay? So I wanna know what is the percentage or probability or area that corresponds to 0 0.9 on my z-score. So I go to my standard normal table, and I'm looking for, to begin with, a z-value of 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So I take my chart and I look Z 0 0.9, which is right here. Now notice there's no extra digits. So actually I can think of that as 0 0.90. And so 0 0.90 gives me a number. That number is 0 0.31, 0 0.31594. I'm gonna copy that down and go back to the previous page and write down that the area then that corresponds to that red band, according to our table, is 0 0.31594, or if I like, 31.594%, right? That's the percent right there. Once I have that red band, then I can go back and get the yellow band, right? So now I'm gonna get my yellow band. So I'm gonna go back to my chart and I'm going to look, and this time the Z value that I'm gonna focus on is this one right here, negative 0 0.7. But again, because the right side of our chart and the left side, excuse me, because my chart only has positive values, right? And I know that the left side of my normal curve is the same as the right side of my normal curve. Instead of looking for negative 0 0.7, I can find the area by just looking for positive 0 0.7. So I'm going to look for my Z value being positive 0 0.7 and again, it's 0 0.70, so I'm going to go to my chart, and 0 0.7, notice, falls right here. 0 0.70 is that first number. That first number is 0 0.25804. So I'm going to go back to the previous page and get 0 0.25804. So this yellow band right here has a probability or an area 
corresponding to 0 0.25804, or if I like, 25.804% of the total area under the curve. And that's what falls in that yellow band. So if I want to find the total probability in between 5 pounds and 8 pounds, what am I going to do? I'm going to add up those two numbers. I'm going to take 0 0.25804. I'm going to add to it the other side, which is 0 0.31594. And when I add the percentage in the yellow band with the percentage in the red band, that's going to give me a total of 0 0.57398. And I'm just going to label, recall, this is the probability that the number of babies that weigh between 5 and 8 pounds, this is the probability that those babies will lie between 5 pounds and 8 pounds. The probability is 0 0.57398 or 57.398%. If I want to actually calculate the number or how many, well, now I have to go back to my original number, which says there are 800 newborn babies. And so I have to take 800 total babies and multiply that by 57.398%. Or if I like, multiply that by 0 0.57. 398. And when I multiply 800 times 0 0.57398, I get that the total number of babies then is roughly, and I'll put an approximate, 459.184. I'll round up because you can't have a fraction of a baby, and so we'll say that's 460 babies that fall within those, those weights of 5 pounds and 8 pounds. So that's part one, and in the next video, I'll go ahead and do part two.